So now we've got the uh, machine probing the uh, work surface and reporting a Z value to the operator, and it's even counting how many times it's doing that. Let's go ahead and save that information off to a comma separated values file. So a little bit more Python here, and the nice thing is we do have examples up online. If you go to uh, our GitHub page, um, you'll see under Tormox GitHub example robot programs, uh, there is an example in here that should show you how to do this. So you don't have to type what you see on the screen, you can just go and cut and paste from GitHub. First thing we need to do is import the CSV module. One of the miracles of Python that people have written wonderful code for you to use. And then I think we need to create that CSV file. So I'm just going to go ahead and cut and paste a little bit of this here. Copy, paste. So what we're doing here is we're creating a file called probefile.csv. We're going to open that file up as a writable file in write mode. Uh, and then we're going to go ahead and write a row full of names here. And I've got X, Y, Z, A, B, C. Let's, um, yeah, just going to add the count to that. Uh, and we'll add count to the last row there. Let's see. So we then do our move. We go to the probe position. We go ahead and uh, subtract 100 millimeters from that current pose to get a new pose. We probe down in that direction. Uh, we're updating our count, and then we're going to go ahead and notify the operator. Let's replace that notification with uh, writing the CSV file here. So, um, I'm going to go ahead and copy and paste some stuff. And I'm a little bit lazy. Uh, and... Let's see, the only difference here is uh, val is actually value to list. So that'll write everything, um, everything but count in there. Let's just see how that works. That'll give us a few different values. Let's go ahead and see what we've got um, in here for, uh, what do we call it, profile.csv. Okay, and so here we have um, our CSV values. If I had opened this in a spreadsheet editor, they would actually be set out in columns. We have the first row correct. We've got the X points, we've got the Y, we've got the Z, uh, A, B, and C rotations. We don't have the count. We knew we weren't going to have the count. So let's go ahead and toss that in. Um, first off, let's add, um, let's add count to that list. Um, val list equals value, oops, to list. That takes a pose object, turns it into a Python list, and then we'll do val list.append and we'll add in count, and then we'll go ahead and change this command to say val list. Give that a shot and see what we get. And we can see in here we're actually getting the count in there. So we've got it probing. We've got it counting. We've got it saving stuff off to uh, a list. Let's go ahead and do something a little bit more complex now. I want to probe an entire grid of points. I want to save those all off to my CSV file. And, um, and then we'll increment that count every time we make a whole pass. Don't let the complexity of this file fool you. It's actually pretty simple, and we're going to walk you through it, and it'll be up on GitHub for you to take a look at later if you get confused. Um, we're just going to create a checkerboard pattern. 
Uh, we can do it in arbitrary um, width, number of rows, number of columns. In this case, I'm setting the width to 800 millimeters here. And I've just gone ahead and said we're going to do seven rows, seven columns, and each square in the checkerboard pattern is going to be 50 um, millimeters apart. So we're going to be probing an array of points uh, 50 millimeters apart in a 7x7 seven seven grid. Um, the very first thing we're going to do here is just create the grid. Uh, we're going to assume that the lower left square is kind of the 0, 0, 0 point. And then we go ahead and create these rows. So what I'm doing here is creating a Python list object right here. Grid equals brackets. That's going to create a list. And then I'm going to append each one of my rows in there into that grid. And then I'm going to go ahead and nesting, when I'm creating each row, I'm going to go ahead and then create all seven columns for each row at the same time. So here I'm just giving x and y values. And it's pretty easy. I'm just multiplying that times the square size that we defined up here. So 50 millimeters apart on the x, 50 millimeters apart on the y. And then here I'm creating each pose. So the, my list, my Python list, each uh, element in the row list contains a column. And each element in the column list contains individual robot poses with different x and y values. All this stuff, this pose math that you're seeing in here, it's all in the robot programming language documentation that's on our uh, Confluence page, all online. Uh, you'll see something a little different here. I've got a user frame in here. We didn't have that with the other example, but uh, basically it's like a work offset for CNC. It allows me to say, hey, this is my 0, 0, 0 point, and let's reference everything in that 0, 0, 0 point uh, let's reference all the other points to that 0, 0. So 50, 50, 0 is going to be an x displacement of 50 millimeters, y displacement of 50 millimeters, and the same in z, if that makes sense. So we've got, we're going to go ahead and make sure that user frame is active. And then we're going to go ahead and probe all this stuff. And we'll go ahead and save the values as a CSV file. Sound good? Shall we see it in action? Yes? OK. But you could speed it up. You do whatever you want in this, as it's probing the grid. And then we'll go take a look real quick at the CSV file. <sighs> so we'll take a look at this CSV file. And you can see here. Um, all the probe positions are being saved out in this CSV file. So we've got this robot probing away in the background here. And I want uh, this to let me know when it's figure finished a 1,000 iterations of, this, uh, of the program. Uh, so I need two things. One, we have to go ahead and add that count variable back into this program and, and write some Python to say, if the count is greater than 1,000, uh, send the message and abort the program, right? So that's pretty easy. We'll just cover that right now. Uh, count equals 0. And then down in here, when we write that row, let's see, we want uh, here, we would say count plus equals 1. And if count is greater than, say, uh, 1,000. Now we want it to be if it's equal to 1,000, right? Um, then we'll go ahead and um, send me a text message. We'll get to that in a little bit, TBD. Uh, but uh, also, we'll go ahead and exit. So that'll just go ahead and abort the rest of the program. So I've pulled up the GitHub page with their example robot programs. And you'll see there's an SMS example. Um, SMS is different from MMS. That would be a picture message. But this is the message I'm sending a text message. 
Uh, you can read the README here. There's also a forum entry that discusses this. But what you're going to need to do before you do any of this is go sign up for an account on Twilio. There it's the, Twilio is a Python text messaging uh, platform. Um, if you sign up, they give you 10 free credit. That's like 2,000 texts. I think I'm still on their free credits here. And when you sign up, they'll give you an auth token, and they'll give you a from phone number. That would be the phone number that shows up when you send the text or when you receive the text. I'm going to go ahead and grab the code out of here, sms.py, and copy it over here. We'll do a new file, and we'll save this. Save as sms.py. And I think in here, this is where I'm going to have to go grab my account SID, auth token, and number. But we don't want to show that on video anyway, because uh, this is my free twin at $10 from Twilio. Um, and then we'll go ahead and look in here. That's just the little bit of Python that does the magic. There's a, another piece of code in here that shows how it gets used, SMS example. And it looks here like all we have to do is sms.send sms alert. ProGrid. Uh, here's the send me a text message thing here. And I think it's something like this. Uh, my destination phone number, this is where I'd put in uh, my phone number, which is plus 608. And then we won't show the rest of this here. Um, right, Monty? Because I don't want people knowing my phone number. I'll block you. Okay. Oh, come on. Insert comma. And it would be plus 608. OK, now that we've got my phone number in there, I'll go ahead and save the program, reload, hit cycle start. Great, OK. Here's the last row. Or wait, one more row to go, maybe? Oh, that was the last row. Should be getting a text any moment now. Cool. So we covered probing, a little bit of Python. We covered uh, creating a variable that counts the number of times the robot achieves some goal. Uh, we covered writing files to a, writing values to a CSV file and we covered text messaging. Uh, all these examples are up on our GitHub pages, and they're being discussed on our user forums at forums.tormach.com. Thank you so much for watching.